Look who I found. A little poodle. A little exotic poodle in the wild. Hi, lady. Hello. Do you want me to toss a ball? It's been since Vlogmas that you've had an online ball toss. Where are you going to catch it? Yes! Good job! Good job. Actually, it's very Vlogmas appropriate because check out my socks. I'm wearing tall boots today because um, a friend of ours told us it was going to rain cats and dogs. It has not rained cats and dogs yet, but it's still like kind of a gloomy day. So I wore my tall boots with... A cute new dress actually that I really like. It's from um, Cezanne and if you've never shopped there, I thought it would be like kind of overhyped, but it's actually like the quality of everything I've gotten there is really cute. So this dress is like a lace kind of knit that I really like. It's what I'm wearing for Mother Daughter Day. <laughs> Look who I found. So we're gonna have a little mother daughter afternoon. I don't know that I'm gonna have that much that's exciting to film, but I'm gonna show my mom my favorite nail salon, which you guys know about already. We might go for a little happy hour if we have time, and then a little walk around Tota Mall as well. So we're okay. gonna have a little east side exploration day. And I'm being licked. <laughs> you will see Lady a little bit later. I'm letting my mom pick my nail polish color. <laughs> so you wanna show everyone the finalists? They're both OPI colors. I like the this numbers one are unique to Bayside Nails, I think. So I'll tell you after what the finalist I won I got um, looks like. I don't know why it's not focusing. Oh there we go. So they're both like medium pinks, um, but one of them has more like sparkles than the other. Better than the one ninety nine that I had picked earlier. Um, you mean the beigey one? The more like beigey one? one? Yeah. You like that one? The 124. There we go. So I think this one is the finalist. I like it. That's the one? Yeah. It's like a rose gold almost. It reminds me of your yeah, trench yes. coat. Oh my gosh. Are you just copying your trench coat on my nails? <laughs> I have so many compliments so. on that coat. Yeah. You know, last time, the, the, the woman Where's it who from? ran after me into the what? shop I was in oh my gosh. to ask me what it was. Where did you get it from? Name and Marcus. Name. Oh, okay. And it's it's an Armani. Oh, it's Armani, yeah, Emporio Armani. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not the. Yeah, yeah. It was a good buy. You've worn like it a, a lot. Cheap Armani. And where where is your dress from? Because I feel like oh people gosh, are gonna I ask me. I have no idea. Is it maybe like a Maggie London or something like that? It looks a little bit like one. Yeah. And now we are at Perth at the Heathman Hotel after leaving the nail salon. We had a nice little chill time while we were there. And I wanted to share this really cute moment because you guys know my mom picked my nail polish for me and it turned out really pretty. It's like a rose gold, but a little bit darker than rose gold. And it has a lot of shimmer, but not glitter. And it's really pretty. And the color is called Cause You Melted in the Sun. And I am certain that that is the color I got for my high school graduation. And the funny thing is, so that was actually regular polish, not gel. Um, so this is the OPI gel version. Um, but I'm certain my mom also like helped me pick that one out. So this is officially her, you know, official Jeanette polish, favorite nail polish of all time through the ages, 33 now. I was 17 when I graduated graduated high school, so it's not kind of wild and fun. I love that. Um, so yeah, we love a good happy hour. Let's we'll see how this one is. It's really cute in here. It's still early, so not that many people in here, but we kind of like it that way. So let's gonna chill out, have a little cocktail, have a few nibbles, and enjoy the start of the long weekend. All right, so here is our hearth spread. We have the cutest little baguette. It's a demi baguette um, with a it's dipping. Like a ah, that's true. Yeah, that's true by our standards. Or a third? No, you're right. It's a quarter. Yeah, it's a quarter. Um, and then this looks neat. It's um, burrata with a pea hummus, like green fresh spring green peas and then you know because we could and they have a pizza oven here we got a margarita pizza so that's our little early dinner spread this is my mom and i's shared shopping cart i'll show you the goodies um nothing really too out of the ordinary actually but a few things that are exciting this is back in stock and i've never gotten to try it supposedly everyone says it's comparable to the brazilian bum bum cream that's sold at sephora for like 50 dollars so we're gonna try that um, I'm planting some herbs this summer, so I got mint and my mom got rosemary and I think what looks like oregano from here. Um, we've both tried this red wine and really liked it for the price, which is seven bucks. 
and I decided to try this new one, um, which is a Spanish one that looks really good. Um, and then this is my favorite cheese that I often get. This looks new to me as well. I don't actually know if it's new to the store, but I thought that was a neat idea since I'm always picking out the seeds from my piccata. Um, and then these potatoes are really excellent. I usually always buy some. Gotta get that Kerrygold. And then just, yeah, pretty standard sort of stuff. But all of the goodies and some pretty peonies for my mom that I'm getting her, but she doesn't know about that yet, so don't tell her. So it's really late now. It's like almost midnight, but I've had such a fun creative streak. I decided to just let myself use all these bits and pieces of precious stones and findings that I've been accumulating over sometimes years, I'll show you, um, and just kind of run with it and not worry about like whether I can get more stock of it and if it makes sense, you know, like price-wise to use or how I'm going to price it or any of those things and just have fun and see what I make. And these are not things to sell, these are really just things for me. Um, but I think I just feel so creatively reinvigorated by just letting myself make whatever um, because I really haven't gotten to do that in quite a while. So if you are feeling like in a little bit of a rut, I think it's really fun to just sit down, assemble all sorts of bits and pieces. I could see like doing that with cooking or any other for like art form and just run with it and who cares if it's ugly so i'll show you what i made i'm pretty happy with it and excited to wear some of it um and just kind of see what else i make so um you guys know when i do like my late night jewelry sessions i usually watch shows so i've been watching hacks which was really funny and kind of added to the light mood it's not as good as season one but it's still pretty funny and you know coastal granny vibes this is like vegas granny vibes and she's so fabulous um i just love um her style in the show i think it's really fun so here is the stack of all of these precious stones I have built up over the years and just a general disaster um, of pearls and things. But here's the result, my creative results of the evenings. So yeah, I'm not planning on listing these. These are for me. If I do do something along these lines, um, I'm just going to start listing random things that I really like. But these particular pieces are for my own enjoyment. And this is little pretty topaz briolettes that I ordered by accident two years ago so if you're familiar with my gemstone briolette these are half the size so too small to use for that design of course and so they've just been sitting there and there's a little bit of turquoise on that earring as well then this one in the middle I'm um, just to tell you what the stones are in case you want to try make something with it um, this is carnelian this is like a smoky quartz looks black but it's actually brown it will focus and then I've got citrons going on there um, really pretty lemon citron this is one of my favorite things I've made this evening so this is like a sideways hoop it's hard to tell really how it'll sit on this because this is not an ear but it's just a simple gold stud with an Akoya pearl and I really like the double hoop on it I think it looks kind of fun and modern but playful and I like the way the um, pearl just looks like it's floating there and of course because this thing is velvet it's covered in cat fur so excuse that um, and these are just the you know matching other side then I made myself a little bracelet with a Tahitian pearl here if I'm being really honest I feel like the pearl is a little bit big compared to the chain but I really liked how the pearl looked with the silver and I just really, really like this bracelet style. I don't really own anything like it. Um, let's see if I can get this off. So this is actually adjustable. It's lined in rubber, so you can slide it up and down, and it doesn't tend to move around, I don't think, but I haven't worn it yet. Um, and then here I've got a 14 karat gold chain with the same mechanism here, so you can wear it, I think, it's like from 16 to 20 inches adjustable and a clip-on pendant so I'm kind of thinking of doing a convertible kind of vibe there for myself but I'm not sure what I want to put on the pendant yet maybe I'll go matching and do like an Akoya pearl like the earring or not we'll see that's probably like 
to be continued tomorrow or next time I don't have too much work in the evening. And then last thing I made, I don't know if you've ever seen pearls like this before. They're actually pretty hard to find because they're Baroque Tahitian pearls. So they're not round, but they're also not really nubbly either. They're kind of more on the oval side of things. I've just had them sitting around forever because I'm not using them for any of my current designs. And I put a really pretty sailor clasp on it, which I really like. And then in between each one, there are little semi-precious stones. Those are lapis lazuli. So I really like how the blue and green really sets off the beautiful peacock color of the Tahitian pearls. And then some unfinished earrings. I'm going to make these for my mom. Um, this is turquoise as well. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to put on the stud yet. If I'm going to do a pearl um, or maybe some topaz, I think that would look pretty as well. Um, but I'm not sure yet. I haven't really... I might need to get something for this. But the main reason I pulled these out is because Omega clips like this, if you don't have pierced ears, are the most comfortable. Either this or a screw back. Um, and they're pretty hard to find, so I'm really happy to have um, some of these. I think I've got like three pairs in gold and silver. Um, and my mom doesn't have pierced ears, and I didn't have pierced ears either until I finished my first law degree. So I remember the pain of earrings that pinch, um, and so I'm always kind of mindful of that. So yeah, that's it. It's time for me to go to sleep now. I'm getting a little delirious, but I thought I would show you my little creative growth spurt this evening and kind of keep going with it, see where it takes me. Yum! Chicken and waffles and freshly squeezed orange juice. Good afternoon. It's a rainy Sunday afternoon on Memorial Day weekend and I thought I'd check in and say hi. Just finished getting ready for just a super casual date night to go see Top Gun, the new one at least, because I just finished re-watching the old one which was kind of fun. I love the soundtrack. It's so good. Um, I'm gonna make the bed, you know, Sunday. There's nothing like some crisp sheets, but today's especially exciting because these are actually brand new sheets. Like they still have the cardboard inside them. Um, and this is pewter from Ball and Branch in this really subtle, pretty stripe. So I'm really excited to see what those look like on the bed. The sheets that are on there right now are fret tape. Um, but three, two, one. The sheets that are on there are Frette, um, but as expensive as Bull & Branch is, Frette is more expensive. I've taken to liking the softness um, of the Bull & Branch ones, and I haven't noticed a difference in quality between the two. They're both really fancy sheets, and I thought it might be nice um, for you to hear my Bull & Branch review because I often see influencers working with them, but I haven't worked with them, so this is 100% my own money and everything like that. Perfect time to sit down with you. I wonder if I, can I put you on the windowsill? How's that? A Little bit crooked maybe? I apologize, but it's just easier to have my hands free so my arm doesn't get tired. I've been doing CrossFit. I went to CrossFit on Friday and it's definitely like kicking my derriere. I saw your comments and have taken them to heart on my launch video um, with the footage from my vacation to Destin, Florida. I'm actually getting like rain on me. Um, I hope you can at least hear some calming rain sounds for this because my hair is getting frizzy. Um, but I do get it that you feel like that video was geared at my launch and it was to some extent because I got to photograph some of my new Burl pearls while I was there. Um, that said, I think I have two things to say to people who feel like that was, you know, like not a good use of the video and like something they didn't want to see as an update after not seeing me for a little while and like maybe I talk about my jewelry too much or more than I used to all like totally fair comments and most of them were really politely stated so I appreciate that um, and I appreciate you guys you've been in my life for like a decade now so I thought we'd just like have a little chat about it. As most of you know I work full-time I'm a corporate attorney but I really can't talk about that on this channel it would be super unprofessional so I just kind of like mention that once in a while but otherwise I really keep my online life very separate um, and so my business and my creative pursuits are kind of something that 
is fun for me to share on my channel because it is something that I can openly talk about because I'm the 100% shareholder in my company. No one else is involved. I pretty much do everything on my own to a fault. So I know that I'm never, you know, um, involving anyone else or sharing anything in an unprofessional way by talking about that. So that's often kind of why you see that sort of content. And then the other reason is just totally natural and incidental, which is that it's my original passion other than law. So the things in my life that are important to me right now would be my career in law, my relationship, and you know my creative pursuit of being a business owner. And so you see that part because that's the part that I feel comfortable sharing publicly. And so um, I kind of wanted to remind you of that a little bit, um, but then also let you know that I do get it and I feel like um, a lot of the content that I'm really enjoying watching right now is just like super casual old school YouTube type content where that can be found um, and so I'm invested in creating more of that for you um, and you'll be seeing that a little bit this summer hopefully and in this vlog. So, so with that said and that kind of like promise to provide more organic and less I guess more formal curated content um, I also want to remind you too that sharing my business is really the only way that I see any financial reward on this channel because I can't even remember the last time that I did um, a sponsored video. Unfortunately, I've seen that world change a lot over the decade of being on YouTube and I just don't tend to gel well with the sponsorship agreements that are being presented to me. I would make like this like pledge to you to never do one again in the hope that then you feel maybe a little bit more comfortable about me sharing my own business on here. Um, but you never know. I mean, you know, if like this brand that I love comes along with a super fair organic agreement that is well drafted, I totally might buy it. Um, but it's pretty unlikely, I think, at this stage. It's just not really something that I feel passionate about. So I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, I get offers, I'd say at least once a week. And like I said, you'll have to look up the date for my last sponsored video or I will and put it here because I can't remember <laughs> the last time it was. It was so long ago. So I guess my channel's kind of an odd one that way. I share my own business because it's something I'm super passionate about. It is something that kind of does make sense from a business owner standpoint, of course, um, but it's also something that I feel like I get to share with you really openly in a way that I don't get to share other parts of my life. So with that said, let's make this bed. And oh, I wanted to show you some makeup all the time always neutral but I really like this isn't really much of a date night makeup look I mean it's pretty light um, but that's kind of what I was going for so classics here Yamamoto Yama going on Coco Mademoiselle I wear this every day mostly um all right new things so for the summer although it's not really that kind of day to day with the cats and dogs coming down um, <laughs> is this um, serum sunscreen that I've been really liking because it gels or like, you know, emulsifies, I guess, really well with the Super Serum Foundation. So this has a tint to it, but it, you really get no coverage from it. It's mainly so that you do not get any kind of sunscreen cast. And then this is the foundation I wear every day. I used to wear the Clinique BB, but my skin, you know, at 33 is a little bit drier than it used to be. And so I prefer something that has more illumination, more moisture, um, and it just sits better on my skin. So all over the eyelid is MAC Woodwinked. I'm not going to cry about this, you know, this is a discontinued Armani powder that I still haven't found anything I love quite as much. The Gucci one is good too, but I'm still using this up just like so sparingly every day. Um, two mascaras that I'm actually combining right now and loving is the Ilia. This is the original one. It's really good for separating. And then for volumizing, this is the cheapest mascara I, th I think I have ever bought. It's got something like 20,000 positive reviews on Amazon. It really is like a cheapest chips one. You can even buy sets, so it's even cheaper, which is probably what I'm going to do next time. 
it's so good. And then I know everyone has a lot of opinions about my hair too. I think it's looking pretty good right now though. I like the dark roots. I think they kind of work. I'm not trying to go for a real um, blonde kind of vibe, but it's a lot more um, in the ashy vein that I want to achieve and that has been a struggle it has you know so you've seen my hair super brassy because it's been I don't know why like kind of tougher to lift the hair I think because my hairdresser has really wanted to protect the condition of my hair um, and she did that successfully it's not fried um, the ends are really healthy I just had a little trim but even before that it wasn't so bad um, for you know how processed it is um, but I think as a result of that too it's taken like many steps and many appointments to get it as cool toned um, and lifted as I have wanted it to be and I'd say it's like pretty close now to what I want so that's good um, hopefully it's like less offensive for people to look at because I know um, not everyone has been a fan of this change but um, also like something to keep in mind that makes me not regret the change at all is that I have a lot of gray hairs and I'm not ready to embrace um, that as a look it's just not what I feel like right now um, and so it was either dying at dark or dying it lighter. I really did feel like it was the perfect time to do something so um, this is what I went with and it's kind of like it's a fun new journey and look for me. If you followed me for a while you know I never change my look. I always have the same style. I keep the same clothes for years. I love you know classic jewelry, classic everything so it's kind of fun to you know have a moment where I embrace something new and so far I like it which I think is what matters. Um, last thing, so here's a life decision that I do regret, however, I microbladed my eyebrows and it. she did a fantastic job, um, but it looks a little weird now with lighter hair and it's sort of faded so it doesn't look as good as it used to because I haven't had it done in over three years now. Um, so. I'm always trying to kind of cover that a little bit um, and make that work um, with my eyebrows and dyeing them lighter ain't going to fix it because that would look so bizarre. You could actually like, if I had really light blonde eyebrows, you would be able to see the strokes from the microblading. So that's, you know, think about whether you want to change your hair color before you microblade your brows because I have to say, I didn't think about that. It didn't feed into my decision really. So um, what I've been doing is I use a little bit of ashy powder which is the Anastasia here. It's a taupe color and then I used to use the Anastasia um, taupe color brow gel too. You can see the color of it in here so it helps to cool down um, the look of my brows and lighten the look a little bit just a hair. Um, but it's gotten so chunky. I don't know why. I've only had this for a few months. Not super happy with that so I decided to try the Ilia one as well. Video not sponsored by Ilia either or Woolen Branch. It has no sponsor I promise um, but I do really like it and it's a much thinner kind of more natural looking um, consistency so I don't get little clumps between the hairs in my eyebrows. So yeah, this is just super simple outfit because I'm going to have to pull out my boots, which is wild. Do you want to see inside my closet? I just switched everything around, so um, I only have a couple pairs of boots out. I moved summer dresses over here. I still have all my work blazers up there, you know, just in case I have an in-person meeting. Um, jeans over here. And then I used to have dresses over here and cardigans on the other side where you just saw the dresses. Um, but I moved them over here because I know I'm going to need access to them a little bit less, hopefully, if the weather ever feels like summer. And then over here, I feel like I should color code this to make it look more, you know, Instagrammy, but I have all of my button-up shirts which are great for online and in-person meetings that are a little bit more casual. I love this brand. I've mentioned it before. It's just the best linen shirts. Jack Wills here. You can see I love this Jack Wills shirt, but look how wrinkly it is even compared to these guys, right? They were just really great. They pack really right. They come in the prettiest colors. I have so many candy colors of these because they're just the perfect like for my work environment with um, some nice jeans or trousers. It's just a really easy look. Finish it off with some pearls. Yes, sorry. I can't stop talking about pearls. It's just 
in my nature. Um, and then I have a few silk shirts. And if I add kind of anything more, I think, to my spring summer wardrobe, it would be maybe one more dress. And then this shirt I have worn the life out of. And it's just so hard to find really cute long sleeve silk shirts like this so i would like to add a few more to my collection this yumi kim one is really nice too um and this one that i'm wearing is from bash but it's really really old so i don't know if anything like it is still available i wish there were brands that just did pretty printed silk shirts that you know are nice blouses you can wear them under a blazer or more for like a date night dress down a little bit like this but I'm not sure where to look for them so if you have any leads let me know i have a fridge full of really delicious groceries right now from the trader joe's trip yesterday with my mom and then i got a new um like farm box subscription thing sammy um i just wanted something really simple and comforting today so i'm making a kimchi noodle soup just like my spin on it it's got gochujang and um, kimchi in here and lots of mushrooms dry shiitakes and fresh cremini mushrooms i poached a chicken breast in there and then um, shredded it so i'm gonna add that back in soon and then over here waiting to go in i have some rice cakes the fun little oval ones if you've ever had these um, at din tai fung they're really yummy um, because before that I'd only ever had the long ones, but I really like this shape. I don't know why. Um, and then these are fresh udon noodles from Uwajimaya here in Seattle. I'm going to boil these separately so they don't make the whole soup super starchy. Um, and then I have some chopped up bok choy and green onion and cilantro to finish it. Nothing fancy, but I'm really looking forward to this. Shell hunting. I just found this one. They're usually pretty broken because of the amount of rocks here, but I thought this one was still pretty enough to show you with all the different pinks and grays going on with the shell. A little bit of sunshine, nice breeze, perfect way to enjoy the long weekend. someone's garage but I'm actually at a lovely winery it's called Eleven they've actually won a lot of awards it's super cool they have like a bicycle theme um, here's a little bit about their wine I'm a wine club member and it's actually my anniversary today so I thought I would come and collect on this and do a little bit of wine tasting as well still kind of like a little bit chilly so it's the same day um, but I put on like a little cozy brochure walker sweater and my scarf see the bicycle theme definitely like a fun place and the wine is consistently just 
really excellent really good reds for Washington which are not always the most um, consistent in terms of being not too acidic in my experience so yeah we really love it here been a member for about a year and keep coming back it's pretty gross outside today but you can see it's like on a sunny day pretty glorious to be here I'm making mushroom risotto so I can't step away for too long, but look how cute. And if you're wondering where this box is from, it's the Eleven Winery box that I just brought back with my wine club membership wine and I took out the divider and look at that. Are you too happy in there? It's a little small quarters, tight quarters, don't you think? <laughs> BB is the number one box lover and Sammy just doesn't want to be left left out of the party. So that's, that's the vibe right now. Aww. So here's my mushroom risotto going. Nothing too crazy. Um, but in here I have dried morels and shiitakes. Shiitakes being much more of a bargain, but of course the morels have a wonderful flavor and texture. Rehydrated those in some chicken stock over here and then chopped them up and threw them in the risotto. This is another couple minutes to go. I need to keep an eye on it instead of filming. You have to make sure you add ladle by ladle all of your stock and stir it in essentially to develop um, the starchiness of the rice so that you get a creamy result with no cream. I do have a little creme fraiche that I'll finish it with. Um, but the hack that I wanted to share with you because I know many of you have air fryers too. You know I love mine so much. It's a little beaten up looking at the stage, but I use it almost every day. If you want crispy mushrooms, like look how crispy this is. This is an oyster mushroom. I'm going to stir, I don't know, maybe about a third of these in and then um, serve the rest on top. Um, they are just air fried for about 12 minutes with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of my own sage that I've been growing back here. Um, it's like a teeny little plant, but I have a little herb garden going on there. So um, it saves like doing another pan with a lot of butter to get a really kind of delightful textural combo between the creamy risotto and the crispy yummy mushrooms. Ta-da! You can see the nice crispy mushrooms, creamy risotto, lots and lots of mushrooms. That's how... I love to make it. I'm gonna finish off this vlog by showing you a few fun things. Here is the new bedding that I think I mentioned a couple of days ago at some point. Um, it's called Pewter from Bull and Branch. It has a really subtle stripe. I really love it. Um, and I got white, um, a white fitted sheet and pewter edged um, pillowcases, shams for the back. So I really like how that turned out and how it looks as well with the um, Restoration RH Home um, furniture and this little canopy that I got and put up last summer. I have to say the sheets also look very becoming with BB's fur shading. And um, what else was I going to show you? I think I already showed you some of the makeup that I really like, but I thought I would show you this. Um, so this lip balm it has been my most worn over the last year. This pretty much never happens. I don't know. I have so many lip products. I'm actually going to finish this soon. Look at the little tiny nub that's left there. Hardly anything at all. So that's kind of fun. It's the watermelon glow um, lip pop and part of the reason I've been wearing it so much is I love the way it looks with just a tiny bit of lip liner smudged and only on my lower lip line. I'll show you a close-up next. Um, and this is the color Nude, which I think was recommended by Laura Vitali on her um, Instagram. Just line the lower lip line here, use my finger to smudge it out a little, and then apply the balm on top. And if I feel like it's still, you know, too much of a line, then I'll smudge that out as well with my finger. But I really like how it looks. It's really subtle. It feels like just wearing lip balm. 
And then earlier, I actually have a few clips of making English muffins. I was just in my PJs, barely awake, trying to figure out how to make it work and honestly wasn't sure if it was going to because the dough was so hard to work with compared to like let's say a pizza dough or something. The lovely person who shared the recipe is called Sheldon. I believe he actually lives in Vancouver which is kind of fun um, and he shared a recipe for these English muffins, homemade English muffins, that is really different from any recipe I have seen before or the one I tried before which was from an English lady and that was a great recipe but I never found that mine got as aerated as hers did so I wanted to try something new. What's special about English muffins is that it's a stovetop baked good, savory baked good for you know breakfast and it doesn't produce a huge amount of bread which is kind of nice and they tend to freeze really well too so there's like a few perks. Um, but his recipe is very different because it has Greek yogurt in it and it requires an overnight proof which I don't think English muffins usually do require but the end result and the um, added moisture that he has in that recipe as opposed to other recipes which are drier to work with makes it more difficult to work with and not have it just stick to everything including your hands but it is absolutely worth it wow it's so much lighter and you get a lot more nooks and crannies when it toasts up, which I do think is how it tastes best, but I don't think that's unique to this recipe. I think English muffins just in general taste best toasted. Wanted to share that with you, and he has a few other recipes that I'm gonna be trying over the next couple of months too. I hope he makes more, because right now he doesn't have that many videos out, so go leave him a comment to encourage him and let him know that I sent you there if you like, and if you like the recipes as well. Oh, and then out of the corner of my eye, I just spotted that I got a delivery, and look what's new. A few of these are in the wash since last time I showed you, and I got this new one. I don't know why it's so wrinkly coming out of the package, um, but I'll give it a little steam, and it's the same style as the lavender one I had, so it's a little bit longer, um, and I just love the strawberries in cream color. It's actually exactly the same color, pretty close to it about a shade darker than um, my strawberries and cream cardigan so I think those will look really pretty together. I think BB has come up here to bid you adieu for this particular vlog, right? Actually she looks kind of angry but that's probably because she sees Sammy coming over for her usual bath time attention. Say a big thank you to anyone who has family or is serving in the armed forces. My weekend of enjoyment is only possible because of you and because of the freedoms I enjoy because of all the sacrifices that have been made. So thank you and I will see you in my next video.